Hi, I'm Tom Mahoney, and for too long I've allowed the perfect to be the enemy of the good. I've been meaning for a long time to create a pivot table guide to show you how you can make a better gradebook using pivot tables and how to use that gradebook to create better progress reports and get a, a more complete picture of how your students are doing in any course. But because I wanted it to work for so many different grading systems and I wanted the video to be short and clean and easy to follow, uh, I wound up just never making it because I was trying to ask <laughs> too much. I never had time to really polish it the way I wanted to. And so I finally just broke down and said, you know what? A thing that exists is going to be better than a perfect thing that never will exist. So there might be some flubs in this video. Uh, it's not going to cover everything, but I'm going to make some follow-up videos that do some more things. And of course, your feedback will always be appreciated. The way I want to start is what, with what a traditional gradebook looks like. Usually you'd have student names, which I'm just going to use colors for the sake of this video. You'd have student names in your rows, and you might have something like quiz one, quiz two, and maybe exam one. The, your columns would then be assessments or graded assignments. And after quiz one, you would enter scores, let's say seven, six, and eight. Quiz two, you would enter some scores, six, four, and nine. And then exam one, you would enter some scores, and make this worth 100 points, you get 80, 75, and 85. This is what your gradebook would usually look like, and if you're using kind of a traditional grading system, this is probably all you really needed to do. In fact, you can take this and do a pretty simple mail merge into Word in order to get some decent progress reports. It's also what most uh, LMS systems would be able to accommodate fairly easily. But I tend to do a lot of mastery grading or standards-based grading, where I want students to be able to revise their work as they go throughout the semester. And that presents a couple of problems. One is I'm using, in this traditional course, or traditionally graded course, I'm not going to be modifying these columns a whole lot. Once I put the scores in, aside from maybe having to update a score or two, those values are fixed. But if I'm allowing revisions and I have a big table, I might need to update any value anywhere in that table on any given day. And what that leads to is a higher probability of an error. If Blue wanted to retake quiz two and improve a score to a seven, if this is in the middle of a giant spreadsheet, it's really easy for me to put that seven for red instead of for blue. And it's hard to catch those errors. The other thing that happens is as soon as I update that four to a seven, I've lost the information of what the previous score was. There's no way of knowing the history of a particular student's progress in the course by having a grading system like this. Uh, I want to have all the information at my disposal because it's hard to predict exactly what information you want to know when you're trying to you know, intervene with a student to help their progress. So the first step is to go away from that kind of gradebook and more towards a ledger. So I want to keep track of all the data that I could possibly care about. Name, the date of a particular event, the objective that the student was trying to pass. I want to know what their score was. I want to know what version of a quiz they took. And I like to have a column for type. This might tell me whether it was an in-class attempt, whether it was an attempt in office hours, Maybe it was a, a makeup for special circumstances like being gone for a, a school-related event. Whatever information I need to know, I want to have it included in my ledger. Now, the idea with the ledger is every single time there's a graded event, I'm going to have a new line in this ledger. Also, because I'm thinking of this more in terms of mastery grading or standards-based grading, the assignments are not quiz one, quiz two, quiz three, but rather quizzes over a particular skill or objective. So if I'm thinking about calculus, that might be limits or derivatives or integrals. And in practice, they're not, I would not have quizzes quite that broad, but at least those terms kind of bring to mind the kinds of things that would be on a quiz. Let's just recreate an example where June 3rd, the objective that was being assessed was limits and maybe read past version one, which was the in-class exam. Blue, on the same day, took the same quiz, but did not pass it. And let's talk about green, passed it, and yellow, 
also passed it. A feature that I have in all my grading systems is that students may revise their work. So red, recognizing that, that they already had understanding of the limits objective said, I'm going to go in, I'm going to try it the next day in office hours and got a second pass on version two, again, from office hours. Blue saw exactly what the misunderstanding was the first time and passed the second attempt in office hours and green and yellow haven't come in yet to do the next attempt. Now this could be a little bit slow because you're having to type you know, six pieces of information for every single student on every single assessment. And that's where I want to bring in a couple of shortcuts to make life easier. Let's move on to the next day, which would be 6 5 2020. Now that's today. You're probably not watching it on June 5th, 2020, but there's a nice shortcut for entering the current date. That is control semicolon. So control semicolon enters today's date. The next objective that's going to be measured is derivatives. I'll leave the score blank for now, and it's going to be the first version because it's an in-class quiz. And if these are the four students in my class, what I can do is I can highlight one row and all the blank rows beneath it, and then hit Control D, and it will paste that header down. So I don't have to type the date and the name of the objective and version one in class for every single student. I just put all the names there, do this control D, and you get all that information just pasted down. Now all I have to do is type the scores, which I'll say just do one zero one zero. And I can continue this on. But this is not particularly useful at knowing how a particular student is doing in the class. For example, I don't I can't look at this and at a glance know how well red is doing in relation to blue. It's hard to look at this and know exactly how students are doing on derivatives or limits. So I'm going to, have to take this step further. I'm going to highlight all my information and go to insert table. I do want to check that my, my table has headers and it changes the color scheme a little bit. And each time I add a row, that color scheme is going to get copied down and it's going to keep inputting more information into this large table that's going to get longer and longer and longer because it's a ledger of everything that happens in the course. The next step is to click anywhere I want to my table, doesn't matter where, then go back up to insert and insert a pivot table. It'll auto automatically populate the name of the table that you started with and you do want to put it in a new worksheet. And this doesn't look like much. It's not telling me any information. That's because I haven't told it yet which columns from the ledger I really care about. So you'll notice that over here on the right, I have all the columns. And down here in the bottom right, I have rows, columns, values, and filters. Well, I want my rows to look like a normal gradebook, which means I need to drag the, the, the name field down here. So I just took name, click and dragged, dragged it down to rows, and you can see that now I have rows that correspond to my student names. So far, so good. I want my columns to be the assignments or the objectives. So I'm gonna drag, uh, drag objectives over to columns. And now we have something that resembles a gradebook. I have my rows on the left. I have my assessed columns going across the top. Now I just need a way of filling in the information here. And I had to pause here and say that this is an area where it's going to vary greatly depending on how you structure your, your grading system. For me, each event is either a pass or a fail, which I enter my gradebook as a zero or a one. In practice, I don't put zeros and ones on their quizzes. I put check marks and X's to denote whether or not they passed or need to reattempt that particular standard. But it's, for most grading systems, it's going to be beneficial that at least in Excel, you score it as a number. That's the easiest way to, uh, to generate the desired gradebook. There are ways of converting it out of a number later. But because I have this zero one system, what I'm actually tracking is how many times has a student passed a given standard. So for that, I'm going to take my score, which tells 0, 1 for each attempt, and drag it down here. And by default, it's going to assume that I want the sum of the scores. 
That's not how every grading system works, and I'm going to make some follow-up videos on how other grading systems might look if you want it to just be the maximum score that they've achieved so far or something uh, more complicated than that. There are ways of doing that. But if you just want to keep track of the number of times they passed it, here's how you do it. And now I can see at a glance, oh, look, red has passed the derivative quiz once and has passed the limit quiz twice. Green has passed both of them once. Yellow's passed limits but not derivatives. I just have the complete at-a-glance picture, including grand total of how many passes they've earned altogether. So this is basically my, uh, is basically the gradebook that I started with, except for I have some extra information. If I go back to what I started with, now I have the ability of clicking these down arrows and filtering it. So I can just look at red. And I can see exactly when red took things, exactly what versions red has tried. That can be useful if I want to look at red and a, and a particular objective. I can see, oh, well, red has taken versions one and two. I need to make a new version if red wants to try it again. In a later video, I'm going to show you how you can use slices to have a nice like a, a nice interface for doing this. You can just like click buttons and it will turn on or off certain students. So that'll be for a later video. But the point is that you have much more information at your disposal that you don't get just from looking here. But the last thing I want to show you how to do is how to take this information and move it over to Word for a mail merge. Now I'll tell you that the first thing that you that you run into is if I were to just take this file and try to use that as the source of my mail merge, Word only looks for the first row that has information in it. So the merge fields are going to be sum of score and column labels, which is not what we really want. What we really want is to just pull this information into Word. To do that, I need to highlight that information, go over to Formulas, and to define this highlighted segment as a particular name. I'm going to call it Merge Data. And because this is the second time I record this, we're going to call this Merge data two, unfortunately, because I had a, there was a, a flub in an earlier video that I had to start over. So I gave this particular thing a name. So I call this, if I click anywhere and from the drop down select merge data two, you'll see that it highlights exactly the information that I want. Now, if you have a student that adds or drops the course, then you'll either add or delete columns from this, but you have to adjust for that. So I'm going to have to go into Name Manager, and if I lost the student yellow, I'd have to change this reference to D7. Oh, that's the one that I wanted to delete. So Merge Data 1 no longer exists. Merge Data 2, I'd have to change the D7 to D8 to a D7. Check. And now you can see that the marching ants don't include row 8. So if you have student drop, you would just change the number corresponding to the last row that you want to have in your data either up or down as necessary. I do want row eight to be included, so go back to that. And just to be sure, click Merge Data 2. And OK, I'm getting exactly the data that I want. Let's go into Word and show I, how I can use this to make a progress support. If I go to Mailings, I can select Recipients and use an existing list. The files on my desktop, pivot. And you'll see that I have not just sheet five, sheet six, but I have that special box that I defined as merge data two. If I click that, I now have access to all the data that I want. So the pieces of information that I have are as follows. My table has their name, so I can do insert merge field and put their row label, that's their name. I can put in their limit score. I can put in their derivative score by finding the field that corresponds to derivatives, and that will insert the corresponding value here, and then grand total. And if I come over here, I can preview the results. So it tells me in this progress report that blue has passed the limit objective once, has not passed the, the derivatives objective, and has passed one total objective. And I can just tab through all of the students in my class to see what their progress is. Now in practice, you probably want to make this look a little bit prettier. You know, put some tables in there, put the current dates on it, call it a progress support. Uh, there are a lot of things you can do, including changing these from ones and zeros to 
check marks and X's or to EMRN or mastered journeyman apprentice, something like that. Whatever it may be, there are ways of converting it into your grading system. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just sticking with zeros and ones. The last thing that I would do is I always put the, the grading chart on the progress report so that students can look, hey, here's my progress, look down below, here's how I turn it into a letter grade. Then they can e immediately see what they need to do to get to improve their grade. So there are other things to think about that I want to cover in a future video. One is that this would just be something you can print out. Right now, these progress reports are not attached to an email address because these students are not attached to an email address. So I'll have a future video with how you can associate an email address with each student and then use this as a mail merge where you or an email merge where you can send them out by email to all of your students and you can one click send out progress reports to every single student in your class, which is great. The other thing that can be an issue is how you are entering these names. Uh, usually I just use the last name of a student, but if you have two students with the last name, which can happen if you have any a large number of students, you have to have a different way of inserting the student's name here. But you probably don't want to like type out first name, last name every single time. I have a way of making that easier as well. So in future videos, we're going to talk about disambiguating last names, adding email addresses so you can email the progress reports, as well as how you can do something other than just count the number of times that a student has passed. And then another thing I want to show you how to do is how to add another table that keeps track of not just their score for each particular standard, but how to keep track of the number of attempts that they have at each standard and include that information in the progress report as well. Because it's very different if a student has passed a standard one time or passed an objective one time and they've only tried it twice versus they've passed an objective one time out of five tries. Those communicate different pieces of information and that can be helpful to put on a progress report. So there'll be future videos coming and I welcome any feedback and requests about uh, things you would like to see me cover. Thanks for watching.